Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Crucified One. Amen. Today, as we sit at the foot of the cross watching Jesus crucified on Good Friday, we remember that a lot can happen in a short amount of time. A week ago, crowds were cheering Jesus. People waved their palm branches and coats, celebrating the arrival of the Messiah. The chant was, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Joy was abundant, and Jesus' disciples were left with an awesome feeling. Wow, we are lucky to be here as disciples with the coming King. Jesus is going to restore the line of David. And maybe this new kingdom will look like the great kingdoms of old, when Solomon built the magnificent temple to our Lord. When King David and others slayed giants. When there was a wealth of food, worship, and peace throughout the land. Yet, things do change quickly. Within a week, crowds went from cheering into jeering. They mocked Jesus being king. They chanted, crucify him, crucify him. The joy of Jesus' disciples was gone, and they were left not with an awesome feeling, but an awful feeling. Wow, we are lucky to be alive. They are crucifying our coming king. This will not look like the great kingdoms of old. This looks more like Solomon's temple when it was destroyed. It looks more like being killed by the giants. It looks like our people being in exile when there was no wealth of food, worship, or peace throughout the land. I imagine that we can relate in our day and time. Just a few weeks ago, I was learning about a virus outbreaking, starting in a distant place across the globe. And then saying things seemed to progress quickly. The reports I heard went from saying, it's nothing to worry about, to a virus is spreading, but we just need to put out hand sanitizer, to maybe we need to cancel worship this Sunday, to our whole society needs to suspend unnecessary operations. Disciples today are asked to worship online instead of worshiping in community, together in physical presence, which is why I'm also making this video for you as well. This is not the plan I had envisioned for Holy Week. Disciples today find themselves in an uncomfortable, unfamiliar, and unplanned reality. But, in the truest sense, this is Good Friday. This is exactly where Jesus' disciples were at Good Friday. So in many ways, the feelings that we experience around COVID-19 are a fitting experience of what Good Friday was like for his disciples. We have parallels. On Good Friday, Jesus foreshadowed his death. And it was not taken seriously. And originally, the reports for COVID-19 were dismissed. The message finally sinks in when Jesus' death is present. And COVID-19 is seriously discussed as death tolls rise here in the United States. His disciples stayed inside, afraid to go out. And today, disciples stay inside, cautious to go out as well. His disciples wondered why this happened, and we ask the same thing here about COVID-19. His disciples felt lost. Their lives with Jesus had, by nature, to become different. And our lives, too, with COVID-19 are forced to be different as well. His disciples adapted their behavior, and we are called to adapt. His disciples did not want to experience Jesus' death, but we experience COVID-19. His disciples searched for answers, and we today are searching for answers as well, though we have the resource of Google to be able to help us. His disciples felt out of control, powerless to stop his death. 
Have you ever felt out of control with COVID-19? Jesus' death was not a fun story to tell of a Messiah. There is no, and they lived happily ever after. COVID-19 is not a fun story to tell either. Can we just jump forward to, and they lived happily ever after? And just like today, Jesus was mocked, insulted, and unappreciated, which our leaders have been mocked, insulted, and unappreciated as well. So it is clear to me that we are sitting in a metaphorical Good Friday here as we deal with the coronavirus. It is all too real and all so sad. But it's important to sit in this feeling, to accept the things that are beyond our control, and to acknowledge the death that we feel, fear, and experience. To be aware of the ways we are trying to run and hide from this intense reality. For it is through acceptance that there is peace. This peace comes through letting go of the way things are supposed to be and instead accepting that this is the way things are. It is through acceptance that we remember that we are still accepted by God. See, Jesus knew his disciples would react. He knew Peter would deny him three times. And this Jesus, who accepted that this would be the case even before it happened, chose to wash his disciples' feet as a symbol of washing them of their guilt. Jesus was even on the cross saying, Father, forgive them. Why? Because Jesus had already moved into new life. Yes, Jesus was about to die. Jesus was living in a new life mentality. Jesus was focused on the kingdom he was bringing into the world, one of forgiveness, mercy, and connection. Thus, Jesus, John's version gives this illustration of the cross. Hanging there, when Jesus saw his mother in John 19, 26, and his disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to his disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. On that sentiment, I would like to leave you with today. While I do not know things about the future, just as the disciples did not understand about Jesus' resurrection, we can trust that God will help us move into a new life mentality as well. A new resurrected life exists for Jesus' disciples beyond the cross of Calvary. An empty tomb awaits, and there is hope. And for us today, too, a new life and a new resurrection exists. We will move beyond COVID-19, hopefully soon. We will meet again in person soon. We will be able to worship in the same location, thanks be to God. And familiar hymns will be sung in community, played with helpful instrumentation. We will see signs and wonders displaying God's power back in our day and our time. So remember, a lot can happen in a short amount of time. Where do you hope to be in a month? How are you being called into a new resurrected life? Upon that note, I will let you mull and think it over. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.